guys. Thanks for coming back. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we're going to take the shell off of this 234W tender that I picked up at a train show not too long ago. Um, it's in excellent condition already, and I'm thinking we're off to a good start. Uh, it has all four of its steps, which, you know, I usually find these things and they're broken. Uh, so those are all in good condition. The edges of the tender itself are still solid, so if this has been repaired, someone didn't lay the soldering iron on the edge and melt all of this stuff. The uh, lettering on either side is in perfect condition. It's beautiful. Uh, and the wires, if these are original, which they kind of look like they are, they're very pliable still. There's no cracking, and I mean, I can bend them, and it's they flex really nicely, so I think we're off to a good start. So this particular tender just has the one screw in the end, and then it has two tabs right here, which stick through, so you take the screw off, lift it up, slide it out and away it goes. So let's do that right now and just to have a look at the internals here and see if anything weird is going on that might prevent this from operating properly. I like to do a little internal check first before I throw them straight onto the track because I don't want things to short out. I don't want to wreck my transformers or anything like that. So right away it's looking good. I mean, the, the solder joints look nice. They're clean. This relay looks a little bit bent, but that's not a big deal. These solder joints up here look great. I do see some dirt along the whistle box. So I think I'm going to take the plate off here, lift this up, Give the armature a look. You can see a little bit of surface rust here on the, I guess that's the field. And uh, we're going to clean that up. Then we'll throw it on the track and see what she does. But also, if you look here, this relay, if I can get some light in there, that's looking pretty nice too. So what I'm looking at specifically is the bottom part of this relay where the contact comes up. So this contact gets dirty quite often, and when it closes, it doesn't really do much. So that looks pretty clean already, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. And going back to these wires, these look like the original wires still. And to be that pliable, that's, that's something else. Wow, I'm really impressed. Okay, so let's get this uh, plate off, have a look at the um, copper plates on the armature itself and see what kind of cleaning we need to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little wrench here and I'm going to back these nuts right off and lift the whole thing out. So let's get to it. Now these can be a little bit tight space-wise uh, to remove just because the wires, there's not a lot of slack in these wires. When I rewire some of these whistle tenders, I give them a little bit extra so that when I do have to go back in and clean them, I can lift this plate off much easier and not have to worry about possibly breaking any contacts or any little contact terminals. Yeah, this is tight. So we'll just get that out of the way carefully. Move it carefully. Yeah, I can already see the brushes are really bad. They're pretty filthy. There's a lot of carbon buildup on that. So right away, we'd have some issues with it. Like I said, it's kind of tricky to get this out because you don't have a lot of space to play with. So what I'm going to do first is while I got these brushes out, I'm going to get my little green 3M pad and give them a little wipe. Get that excess off there. And look, this whistle tender looks like it's had a lot of use too because those brushes are pretty worn down. 
So, for having a lot of use, and for being the age that it is, it's uh, pretty impressive that those wires aren't all cracked and dried out. So cleaning the carbon off the brushes isn't really a big deal at all. It's just kind of sitting on there. I'm not really applying a lot of pressure at all to clean them off. So there's those. Just slip the spring back over top here like that. Just kind of keep it off to the side. Let's see if I can move this out of the way just a little bit more to get. There we go. So this is filthy. This is supposed to be a copper color, because it's copper, and it is not. It is completely black. So, it is absolutely filthy. And there are supposed to be some slots. One here, one here, and one here. Like a space in between the copper plates. It is absolutely filled with carbon. So I am positive if I was to put this on the track right now, nothing would happen. It kind of looks like a little bit of melting there too. So what I'm going to do is I am going to get my 3M pad and I'm going to clean all of this off. And then I'm going to get my little toothpick tool and carefully scrape out those grooves to get this thing all cleaned up. Okay, so we're back uh, with the tool that I was talking about. So if you might recognize this as a flosser, but what I'm after is this end here, because it fits perfectly in that slot to scoop out any of the carbon, and being a nice, soft, pliable plastic that doesn't hurt your gums and teeth, it's not going to damage the plates in here or anything else. So, see how much carbon was in there already? So this is why I use this particular piece to clean out those grooves. Non-destructive is a good way to describe it. So I... Just a couple more little scrapes. I'm gonna get my green pad in here and I'm going to rub this clean. Now, most of the times in the locomotives, you can just lift this straight out. Um, or you can at least <clears throat> lift it up a little bit higher. You might have to pop some wheels off in some cases to pull it straight out. But this one won't. Uh, you can take the whole thing apart. I prefer not to if I don't have to. So once I get this cleaned, and throw it back on the track. If everything works good as is, then I don't have to take the whole mechanism apart <clears throat> and possibly break that propeller or fan or whatever you want to call it in there. Because So you can already see how nice and shiny that's coming back up. Haven't used a speck of cleaner, just a straight 3M green scotch pad. And actually this isn't even the, the scotch brand. This is a dollar store thing. And for a buck, you get about eight pads that are, I don't know, about yay big or something like that. And they go a long way. I use them to clean the tracks as well. So there we go. We have, the plate's cleaned out, the grooves are cleaned out. I'm going to get a Q-tip and I'm just going to kind of wipe around here because there is quite a bit of gunk. So I got a Q-tip, slightly used, but that's all right. And what I am going to do in this case, I'm going to get just a quick little bit of contact cleaner. Just give it a quick shot on the Q-tip itself. Just like that and just kind of work it in and try to wipe that carbon out and it's working quite well just give the windings a little bit of a wipe 
And the other thing that I want to do, so we've cleaned the brushes, we've cleaned the plate, we've wiped up some excess around here. The next thing we want to do is clean this as well, because the contacts run through these things, so you want them to be cleaned also. So once again, with the Q-tip, just give it another little quick shot of contact cleaner. If I have better aim. There we go. And gently try to bend this in a spot position where you can get that q-tip in there just give it a spin yeah and it's you could see how caked on that carbon was just like everything else so with this i can even cut the little tip off here form it a little bit more it still has more than enough cleaner on it i don't need to put any more on and kind of feed this in there we go, that goes up farther. Just spin it around. And there we go. And that's all nice and clean. I'm gonna clean the little bushing washer. You can't see it in the light. It's right here. Try to get it angled that there. So I can put a little bit of lubricant on that as well. But first I wanna get all of the carbon off of it. I want this to be as clean as I can possibly get it. Because I don't think I'm going to have to take this apart completely, which is great. So there we go. Now these magnetic, these fields here, or yeah, these are the windings. These would be the fields. Again, if you know better than me, and there's a lot of people that do, please put the comments in for the people that need to know the specific information because it is good especially when you're you know looking for parts or asking questions on like a Facebook group or one of the model train groups to be able to identify the part correctly so we're just kind of rubbing off some of this surface rust here All right, so now I'm going to drop the brushes back in. And there's no right or wrong for the brushes. There's no left or right. One doesn't go in one slot as opposed to the other. They both just go in. And bring this back over. Oh, and what I'm going to do real quick is I'm just going to hit that with a little bit of oil. So I am actually going to oil the Q-tip. Let's get... There we go. Get the oil flowing. So I'm just going to hit the Q-tip with some oil and just wipe it on. So you don't want a lot of oil. You don't need a lot of oil on this one. Just like that there. Now we can fit the whole thing back together. Let's make sure you get the wires out of the way. That, that one looks cut. That looks like a cut in that wire. Just sits back down on, boom. There we go. Yeah, okay, so there is a break in the insulation here on this one. As you can see it right there. So where the break is, I mean, it could short out kind of if it touches up here. But we're going to deal with that right now. Right, there's some old grease on there. Let's get rid of that as well. Again, just clean up as much as you can while you got it apart. Because some of these, they don't take too well to being taken apart and put together and taken apart. Eventually, you will have to replace these wires because they just don't flex like they used to. Even this one that does have nice pliable wires, they have their limits still after being around for 70 some odd years. So what I'm going to do while I got the shell off, I'm not going to rewire this because I don't 
The rest of it is so soft and in such good condition that the solder joint at the pickup roller here is still good. I'm going to put a little bit of electrical tape over top of this just to keep it from shorting out onto this frame piece here. Perfect. I'm going to put the nuts back on here and put the shell on. We'll throw this on the track and we'll see how she does. But I think it's not going to be a problem at all. Make sure nothing else is right. That's all in good shape. And again, when I'm tightening down the nuts on these here, I'm not putting uh, too much pressure on them. I'm not tightening them down super hard like it, if it was an engine bolt or something like that because this little fiber piece here could crack very easily. That's really tough to get on. I wonder why. There we go. All right. So just a quick little good enough holding it down not going to go anywhere there's not enough vibration in this part to back that nut off if you tighten it down reasonably let's not throw my wrench at the shell and break a perfectly good shell that would be nice let's keep the shell good all right so there we are cleaned up a little bit of lubricant i think we're good to go Another good rule of thumb is let's set it up on a track without the shell in case there is something wrong so we don't have to keep taking the shell on and off. And if we get a little bit frustrated with something and use a little bit too much force at some point, we might crack this shell. So we'll just leave it off right now while we do our little test. So I'm going to set up a test track right here, get my transformer, and I will be right back and we'll put some power to this and see what we got all right so we have the tender all cleaned up we've covered that little broken spot in the insulation and i'm confident that everything is set solder joints are looking good everything's got some lubricant on it also the pickup roller is in good shape it's nice and clean so we're going to put it on our test track and i've got that hooked up to my Lionel type KW transformer and we're going to put some power to it and see if the whistle fires off so let's get a little bit of power going and so it's working good but I'm not getting a lot of volume out of it so what I'm thinking is, I do see an awful lot of dirt and hair build up in there. So I'm going to have to take it apart further than I wanted to and see what's going on inside there. So unfortunately that means I am going to have to take off a couple of solder joints because I just don't, these wires just won't stretch like that. To get it off so it's just easier to take the time unsolder it and put it back together properly okay so I got the soldering iron set up and I am going to disconnect the wires here be able to take this off so we'll get our wrench again and we'll take those nuts out so we'll back these out get that out of the way and remember your brushes are in there I'm going to have to take this one off too, yes. So 
So let's just get her off. There we go. Now that piece is free. And I don't have to worry. Let's get the whistle box off. So to get the whistle box off, there's these two nuts down at the bottom. So we'll just get them. And there it is. Now, this section, other two nuts in here that are holding the box to the motor. There they are, there's one. And you can see why you want the wires disconnected here, because there's a little bit of twisting. So get the wrench on that, just start it. And most of this stuff is just seated tight. It's not overly tight. You don't want to crack any of this stuff. Because you don't really want to replace the parts. So here we go. So there's the box out. Now you can see the propeller. All right. So that's the whole whistle mechanism. So this here, sometimes it gets absolutely packed with dead bugs and cobwebs and dirt. Stuff like that. So if you can, if you have an air gun or some kind of compressed air, you can usually run that through it. It's not bad. There's a lot of guck on that propeller, though. Get my Q-tip again. I can just give it a little, give it some wipes. Any of the excess carpet fibers, dog and cat hair out of there. It spins nice and free. Let's see if I can get it without breaking that wire. Yeah, yeah. It spins perfectly free. That's in good shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to the sink and I am just going to run some water through it and see if it pushes anything out of the box itself. Because I, I think there's something in there, probably packed up with dust and whatnot. And that is kind of the best way to do it. If you don't have a pr compressed air gun, which I don't. So I'm going to take it over to the sink, give this a quick wash and see if that changes anything. Okay, so I've taken this over to the sink and I have run some water through it, some soap and water. And another trick you can do if there's some, because these are the chambers here um, where the air kind of does whatever it does. So they're hollow behind this plate. It's kind of like a twisty maze kind of thing. So I use a zip tie, stick it in through the hole and just give it a push Move it back and forth, just in case there's anything really compacted in there. Give it a bit of a tap. You don't want to hit it too hard. You don't want to crack this plastic. Again, once you do that, it's a replacement part. So, just kind of work this around in there for a little bit. If a lot doesn't come out in the soap and water, this is your next best option. Do it on this side too, because there's two chambers in here. It's like a two-tone whistle. And you can force it a little bit because you're not really you're not gonna break anything inside there. It's just a like a molded chamber. And to test this, you can actually blow through these holes here. Um, I suggest that you do wash it off with soap and water before you put your mouth on it because just because it's gross. Um, what you have to do is cover up these spaces though first I use my hands like this and then you can blow into it and hear if it's working or not and this one is so that was this side now I'm going to cover it up and blow in this side so I know that this chamber is clean and working fine I am going to clean off this plate one more time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop some oil right down into here because that's another extension of the shaft. Lube that up. So I'll get my oil can. 
like so. Just kind of let's get it primed. There we go. Give it just a little, just a little shot in there. Working around. And it's spinning very freely. It's working really well. Now that I've got it off, off, I can really can wipe off that carbon. And maybe put a spot of grease in this bushing here where the shaft actually comes through. Just a bit. it out on this side here so when the shaft comes through it'll push that up through all that lubricant and we'll be good to go all right so let's start putting this back together so it just you line up the holes or the posts with the holes like so and it should just drop back into place and again trying not to twist the wires up too much or bend them too much so that they'll they break Let's put the screw posts back in again see just till they seat and I put the wrench on and just give it just a little turn and we can throw this back on There we go there. And put the nuts back onto it. There we go. So that's all set back up and we just connect our wires again. All right, so we have everything soldered, cleaned, reassembled, greased, and we're going to put the power back on and see if we can get that whistle tender to work any better or sound any better. Put a little bit of power to it and if the relay is gone, but we're not there. I think we're going to have to do some investigating here. Hmm. Nothing's getting hot. Nothing's smoking. So that's good. I forgot to put the brushes back in. It's not going to do anything without the brushes. So that's my bad, of course. Let's fix that up quickly. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. So now the brushes are in. Now everything is complete, so it can complete the circuit. Now let's put on some power on the transformer and see if we have a whistle. But these can go much louder. So I'm wondering if actually maybe the brushes are just a little bit too worn out now and that's kind of the problem because everything else we're good we're got a clean armature we've got a clean relay everything's working the solder joints are all back together the only thing I can think of is those brushes so maybe I'll look through my parts bin and see if I have any and uh, maybe we'll throw some new ones in and see if that makes a difference okay so I didn't have any of the proper brushes in my spare parts bin so I had to go to my spare whistle tender bin basically the same setup um, this one actually has a cracked propeller that I did a repair on so this one kind of works but it's not the greatest it doesn't work the best so I stole the brushes out of this one to put into this tender and now we got some power going to the track let's give it a try so 
so that's much better. So you can see the difference a new set of brushes makes on these things. So that's what it was. So we did a, a cleanup, got rid of the excess carbon. We took care of this little crack in the insulation to avoid a possible short. Um, put a newer set of brushes in it, and now we're good to go. So now we can put the shell back on. Okay, so I'm just tightening up the shell here. And with these shells, with the screws, uh, don't over tighten them because they will crack very easily. So just, just till it seats and just a little bit of a turn. And that's it. We're back. We're back together. So now that we've got it all back together, I can enjoy running this around on the track. And I'm so happy to have this particular tender because of all of the styles of tender, this one is definitely my favorite. So thanks again, guys, for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe. Um, don't forget to hit the little bell icon for the likes. And once again, to my subscribers, thank you so much for subscribing. You've helped bring this channel up so much. And I'm really glad you guys are enjoying the content and finding it very useful and helpful with your own Lionel hobby. So until the next one, thanks again, guys. Have a great day. See you later.